OK. Um, so in this example, now what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about determining the domain. And I understand some of this time, sometimes, guys, you know, it can definitely be tricky. But I think it's also very helpful because you guys can visualize domain. Domain is, um, again, going to be you know, those x values vertical. And the range is your y values. Um, no, domain x values horizontal. And your range is those vertical values. But when we get into an equation, that kind of gets thrown out the window. Because now we can't really visualize this. And unless we know what the graphs look like, it's kind of a little bit more difficult, right? Or it's a different way we have to apply this. So we're going to only, I'm only going to show you guys how to find the domain. I'm not going to assess you on determining the range from a function. But let me kind of get through your brains a little bit. Let's go ahead and look at this one, especially. So let's go and talk about domain. For domain, and actually, you know what? Everybody has this written down, right? All right, let me talk about a different function. Let's talk about one that maybe is one you guys are like, man, you're going over all these crazy functions. Can we do something we know? Let's talk about x squared. Because in algebra 2, you guys spent extensively on x squared, which produces a parabola. Now, here's that parabola. That graph is extending, right? It's going to keep on expanding. It's going to go infinitely to the left and infinite to the right, correct? The domain of this one is negative infinity to infinity. Does everybody agree with me? Yeah. OK. The reason why the domain is all real numbers is remember, think input output, input output. Is there any number I cannot put in for x and then square it to give me an output? Think of all the real numbers. Is there any number? No, you can put in a million and square it, right? You can put in negative 10 and square it, right? Any number you can think of, you can put in for x and square it to get the output, right? That's why it's all real numbers. Anything you want to pick between negative infinity and infinity, you can use. So when we're looking at an equation, here, the graphically, you guys can see what, it, what works. But in a, gra but in a function, Rather than, rather than trying to find out what is in the domain, it's often easier to find out what is not in the domain. So I'm going to revert back to what we did over here when we evaluated. What was the only type of number that we could not take the square root of? Zero. Zero. So would you guys agree with me is that, I, that whatever is less, whatever makes this, uh, whatever is in my radicand makes it zero is not going to be a part of my domain? Do you guys agree with that? So what I'm going to write is a inequality. That 3x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And what I'm trying to do, what that inequality is telling me is all the values that are greater than or equal to 0, all, I'm sorry, all the values of x that make this greater than or equal to 0 are going to be inside of my inequality, are going to be, I'm um, sorry, a part of my domain. So now we just go ahead and solve. So I go add 1. So I have 3x is greater than or equal to 1. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x is greater than or equal to 1 third. So all the values that make this inequality greater than 0 are going to be in its domain. So my domain is x is greater than or equal to 1 third. That means basically all numbers that are greater than or equal to 1 third. If you wanted to write it in our other notation, you could do that. You could say 1 third to infinity. This is just a different way to write the domain. It's the same thing, though. So 1 third to infinity, or you could write it like that. Anybody have any questions on that? Let's think about it this way. I said 3x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. But basically, all you do is you take your radicand and you make it greater than or equal to 0. So we're saying all numbers that are greater than or equal to 1 third are a part of your domain. So let's pick a number that's not in the domain and see if it works. Let's pick the number 0, right? Is 0 greater than or equal to 1 third? No. So 0 should not be in the domain. So let's plug in 0 here. 3 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. You can't take the square root of negative 1, right? So that shows you that all the values have to be greater than 1 third. Does that make sense? Kind of? So would, it be, would it be like negative? Uh, would, would it be 1 third to infinity, though? Yeah, that's what I wrote right here. I wrote, it, I wrote it like up here. I wrote it in interval notation as well. You can also use this inequality in, in notation, Okay, either of the two. 
to remember why zero is zero. Why it's what? Why you would put zero in the exponent. Um, 